And that's going to be about transfer learning. To be honest, the rest of this course, except for maybe 3D visualization, 3D data, is going to be about transferring whatever that we learned from image classification to other domains. From this point on in the course, it's going to be all transfer learning. You rarely train your networks from scratch for the other tasks because you don't have as much data to work with. Yes, ImageNet has a big size. You, you can have a lot of labeled images, but labeling for other tasks is not as easy as labeling images because then you have to say, yes, there is this object inside the image and here is the bounding box for it. And then somebody needs to draw the bounding box. If you have enough data, you can train it from scratch. But the problem is that we usually don't have that many labeled data. Labeling is a tough task. That's why transfer learning matters. And the rest of this course is going to be transfer learning. And we are going to do two types of transfer learning. One is our network learned something from the data, and we are transferring that knowledge to other tasks. There is also a transfer learning that is implicit. Whatever that we learned so far in the course, we are going to transfer our own learnings to solve new problems. So one is happening on the network side and one is happening on our side. Let's try to go through this paper because it's going to help us understand what transfer learning is about. It's going to give us the big picture. And let's just start with these questions. Can we quantify the degree to which a particular layer is general or is specific to that particular data set? If there is a transition, does the transition occur suddenly at a single layer or is it spread out over several layers? If, it, if there is a transition, where does this transition take place? Near the first layers, near the middle layers, or near the last layers of the network? And to answer those questions, you can approach it systematically. You divide your data set down here. You divide your data set let's say you have your ImageNet data, and you randomly split it into two sets of similar sizes, A and B. If you do a random split, your tasks are very similar. You have the similar images of dogs, similar images of cats in both of your data sets. You can do another type of split. All of the images that are man-made, you're going to put them in your task A, and all of the images that correspond to natural images, you are going to put them in task B. Now, these are different tasks. What we want to do is we want to learn something on A and transfer our learnings to B. What can you do? You can have your original network, and you are going to train it on data set that you collected for task A. And these are, whenever you see these greens, that's going to correspond to the weights that are trained using the data for task A. You can have a base B. And you're going to train your weights. And they're going to be trained based on the data that you collected for your task B. Now you want to transfer. What we want to do is, this is what we are actually interested in. We want to transfer from task A to transfer to task B. What you can do is, for instance, here, you can pick a layer, maybe the third layer. Up until this point, you are going to use the weights that you learned from task A, you can either fix them or you can let them to be fine-tuned. And the rest of your layers, you're going to initialize them randomly. So part of your network is coming from your task A, the rest of it is random. And then you can do your training. If you fix these weights, if there is a lock on them, in TensorFlow, it's going to be tf.stopgradients. You're going to stop training on those. And you're only training on the random weights, randomly initialized weights. That's going to be called A3B. This three corresponds to the third layer. This could be A2B, A1B, A4B, A5B, 6B, 7B. If you unlock those and let them fine tune, that's going to be A3B plus. So that's a notation. This is the final transfer that we are interested in. But then you need to see what is the effect of that. And you want to compare it to what happens if I take these weights from our base B network, because now you want to compare transfer with selfer. And uh, the only difference between the transfer and selfer is that these weights are coming from a network that is trained on the same data. So there is no transfer happening here. There is transfer happening from A to B. And these are just for comparison. So are, are the setup clear? 
is it clear? Uh, the only question I have is about these two um, things you're saying at the bottom, random split versus man-made natural split. So a random split, uh, natural split is, for instance, you have cats and dogs, and these are natural images or images from the nature. Mm -hmm. Man-made would be houses or tables or these sorts of images, and we are splitting that that way. So this is a different task. A and B are very different, but when you split your data set at random, those two tasks are very similar. You have similar data set. Oh, so does that mean like we take all of the thousand images and we we manually go in and like annotate all of these kind of our natural type pictures of nature and these ones are not, and that becomes like the, the data set A and data set B? Exactly, yes. Okay. That seems like then, an interesting choice, like that seems like a strange, maybe not strange, but like an interesting decision that we would differentiate this by man-made and like nature. Why, is there any reasoning to that or is that just a random sort of arbitrary decision? No, that's not an arbitrary decision. The stuff that are man-made are really different from the stuff that are made by nature. And the idea is that what happens, this is a question that you want to answer. How much stuff that you learn from task A can be transferred to task B if those tasks are similar versus different? Somebody might say, no, if your tasks are too totally different, you're not going to be able to transfer your features because these two data sets are too different. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. So we are, we are trying to approach transfer learning from a systematic fashion or try to study it systematically in this paper. So what happens in the X axis, what we have is the layer at which we are cutting and training the rest. For instance, this figure here is going to correspond to the number three here. If you cut at layer zero, you are basically training everything, and that's going to be your base B. So you are training everything. And these uh, different circles that you see is because you can have different random splits. And I guess there are eight of them here. Some of them are on top of each other, but there are eight of them. And there are eight, eight experiments going on. And that's coming to the different splits. What happens at layer one? Uh, you're going to be able to do some transfer. Actually, these are cell pairs. They correspond to B1, B. B1, B plus is this plus circle that you see here. And then you can study your transfer. You can compare it to your transfer from A1, B and A1, B plus. Now let's take a look at the blue ones. The blue ones are going to go down and then come back up, depending on where you're cutting your network in terms of accuracy. And basically, the, the higher is better. Uh, Let's take a look at the transfer. They are going to go down depending on the layer that you're cutting. And this is without training. So these red ones, there's a question from Theodore. These red ones are locked. So you do your transfer. For instance, in this last one, you're locking everything up until this point. And there is no training going on. Cool. So the blue, the, the blue ones at Savan are just saying, like, if we train something all the way and then test it, it's still the same thing. And the red ones are saying if we train it on a totally different task and then test on this new one, there's like actually some information being carried over, it seems. Uh, let's see how it goes. Okay. Uh, I need to finish. So Parker is asking what is the x-axis. Let's take a look at this number three. Number three is going to correspond to this figure here. So you are transferring. You are fixing three of your layers, the first three layers. And then the rest of them are trainable and randomly initialized. So that corresponds to the number three here. If you had number two, you would transfer what you learned from task A into the first two layers and then randomly initialize this and the rest of them and train them. That's what number two means. And number seven is when all of these are green or purple and then you don't have much training going on. And the pluses that you see are when uh, you don't have the lock. Yes, they are initialized smartly and you're fine tuning them. When you have a lock, there is no plus on them. So these are locked. The blue circles, the weights and biases that you transferred, they are locked. You are not going to retrain them using the new data. Same thing for the red ones. For instance, up until layer five, you are not going to train but you're going to train layer six and seven, but you randomly initialize them. And something interesting happens when you let those 
weight to be fine-tuned, to be retrained, you usually see a jump. For instance, in this case, you see a jump, you see another jump in terms of accuracy, you see some more, and that's what transfer learning is actually going to do. You initialize your weights smartly up until some point, and you let your network train the entire thing on the new data set. So the figure below is the same as above, but then it has some nice captions that's going to tell us what's happening. Uh, this is your baseline, and that's giving you that much accuracy, a little bit above 62%. That's our baseline. And you see that the performance when you do selfer is dropping. And then at some point, it's going to go up. And the reason for that, there, there seems to be a co-adaptation between your weights. And once you retrain them, you're missing that co-adaptation. And what does this mean? It means collaboratively, your parameters were in a sweet spot, in a nice local minima. But uh, as you fix some of them and you restart the rest of them, you are not going to get to the same local minima because apparently that co-adaptation uh, is important. And it's a fragile co-adaptation. If you fix them and then you train the rest, you're going to get into trouble. It's not going to give you the same answer. The red one, there is a different reason for that. The features that you learned in, your, in the first few layers, they are generic features. They correspond to images in general. But then as you go down, you go to upper layers, they become specific to that particular task. For instance, you were classifying cats and dogs, but now you're classifying uh, tables and chairs. So these are less transferable whenever you go towards the end of your network. And that's why the performance is dropping. And you see the same drop here on the red uh, diamonds. There is a drop in terms of performance. This is when you're locking the parameters. Now, if you let them fine tune, you're able to recover from this co-adaptation and actually go above your baseline because now your parameters are uh, initialized in a nice fashion. And at the same time, you are able to retrain them. So what do you mean? These trained lines two, three, et cetera, correspond to the second, third, et cetera, label less. Yes, exactly. Yes, yeah, so in the bottom, the bottom we see that like that red line and that's dropping to the bottom and that's tracking with the red solid diamond above. Exactly. So okay. but you're taking an average of these eight experiments and you're reporting yeah. them. But if you let them fine tune, you're gonna recover from this co-adaptation and you're able to recover from the loss of performance if you let your network train the weights that you transferred from one task to the other one. Any questions so far? Did this make things clear now? Yeah, um, intuitively, I would think that the sulfur would perform better than the transfer. So it seems kind of weird to me that the, even though the base layers, even though they're fine tuning, if they were initialized using a different task, they should still be like a little behind the sulfur. But uh, there is this catch. The transfer has seen more data. The sulfur is seeing the same data. The transfer has seen two data sets, data set A and data set B. Uh, so that's why it says improves generalization because it's basically trained on more data through transferring. Not because it's, it has seen more data. So there is some information about the images in uh, the first data set that you're transferring that knowledge to your task B. Even though they're somewhat different, there's still useful information. Yes, there is useful information. Now the question is, uh, what happens in the case of similar tasks versus different tasks? So I'm going to put the table here first, and then I'm going to go to a figure here. The table is uh, how much boost you're going to get over your baseline and how much boost you're going to get over your self uh, This goes back to Surush's question. How much boost are you going to get from seeing a different data set compared to a network that has seen only base B data set. And on average, these numbers, one up until seven, is you either do transfer on layer one, layer two, layer three, layer four, layer five, layer six, or layer seven, or you do your transfer after layer three to seven, or you do your transfer from layer five onwards. And these are the boosts that you're getting. Now let's go back to these questions. Can you quantify the degree to which a particular layer is general or a specific? And that is exactly what we are doing. How general is layer four? How general is layer five, et cetera? 
by this figure, by this table. So it turns out layers five up until seven are more general. And another way to answer the same question is looking at uh, the performance drop of where you are cutting. So these initial features are more general compared to the ones towards the end of the task. And yes, these are, uh, no, actually this network is fully connected, but you can draw the same conclusions for other networks. That one, I need to check the paper, but it doesn't really matter, okay? And this answer is brand new question. These are really uh, analysis that I wouldn't say matter much, whether you're using a CNN or MLP or recurrent neural network. This is gonna happen in general, but this is an example of that thing happening. So I wouldn't worry about the network structure. And I guess uh, I'm gonna finish this. If what is the difference between having similar tasks versus totally different tasks, you are still able to transfer these red diamonds or when you have a similar task. If you have a different task, yes, your features are less transferable, but it's still they are much better than random stuff, random features. Yes, they are less transferable from one task to a totally different task, but still we can do some transfer. I think I'm gonna stop here and some of you are gonna have questions and you're more than welcome to stay and some of you want to leave because you have other classes and meetings. We can leave. So is a is a and I guess maybe this isn't like that surprising, but is a reasonable conclusion just sort of like if I'm working on some image classification task, it is always better for me to just have more data, even if like my task is cats and dogs, and then I just throw in a bunch of data on like cars and trucks, that's still better uh, overall. Uh, yes, more data always helps. And these neural networks are thirsty for data. The more data you give them, the more happy they're gonna be. But here it's a different story. This uh, transfer that we are seeing here is really interesting. I mean, what did the network learn in those weights that is helping it perform better even compared to fine tuning the selfer? Because this is the same thing. Three and five are doing the same things, but five has seen more data. Mm -hmm. And you're just transferring the knowledge that you learned from labels A and images in split A to split B. Mm 